and I'm rolling my jack. Fast like the wind, everybody's on the board. Room to the streets, I'm the man with the plan. Got the world in my hands, every woman wants to stand. I roll in my jack, fast like the wind. Every mission I take, you know I'm gonna win. Ladies on my left, danger on the right. But it's love and respect that I'm bringing to the fight. I'm the dad with the nine lives, playing the game. A heart full of fire. Welcome to the adventures of Jay Cat, where thrills meet tenderness in a captivating blend of sexy, excitement and romance. Hosted by the adventurous Jay Bahari, this hip podcast invites listeners to embark on exhilarating journeys filled with captivating stories and heartfelt moments. Each episode explores the intriguing intersections of adventure and love, transporting you to breathtaking romance and inspiring tales that will leave you yearning for your own escapades. Whether you're a seasoned traveler, a hopeless romantic, or simply someone who appreciates a great story, J Cat Adventures promises a delightful escape into the extraordinary, sparking your imagination and igniting your wanderlust. Tune in and let the adventures begin. Discover the magic of J-Cat Adventures. Immerse yourself in the captivating world of J-Cat. Get ready for a thrilling ride. Filled with romance, suspense, and crime. All served with a side of classic drama. Every week, a new episode of J-Cat the Fearless. It will keep you on the edge of your seat. If you're a fan of the swap and sophisticated James Bond, you'll be hooked on J-Cat's adventures. Join the excitement by subscribe to the Jay Bahari podcast for a weekly dose of action-packed entertainment. I am your host Jay Bahari. Let's go. J-Cat, Shadows of War, A Mission in Lebanon J-Cat stood on the deck of a sleek yacht, the Mediterranean wind sweeping through his hair as he surveyed the glowing coastline of Beirut in the distance. It had been a while since he'd taken on a mission this personal. The conflict between Israel and Hezbollah had been escalating, and the recent aerial assault on Lebanon had reached a devastating peak. The destruction, the civilian casualties, the sheer inhumanity of it all, it weighed on his mind as he prepared for what lay ahead. The scent of salt water mingled with the scent of blood in the air, a grim reminder of the devastation Lebanon was enduring. J. Cat's eyes narrowed as he scanned the horizon. His target was Hashem Safiya Din, a powerful Hezbollah figure rumored to be next in line to lead the organization after Hassan Nasrallah. But this mission wasn't about politics, it wasn't about factions. This mission was about saving lives, minimizing the civilian cost, and stopping a war that was spiraling out of control. Sir, we're approaching the drop zone, came the voice of Tyrone, his cousin and trusted ally, from behind him. Tyrone had grown up in the tough streets of the ghetto, but had emerged as a formidable operative. His resilience made him one of J. Cat's most trusted allies. Good, J. Cat replied, his tone even, though the weight of the situation pressed heavily on his chest. We go in quiet, grab the intel, and get out. But if things go south, we neutralize threats. Tyrone nodded, his expression dark but determined. You think Sophia Dean is still in Beirut? After the last strike, it's a war zone out there. J. Cat exhaled sharply. We'll find out soon enough. But right now, our priority is finding survivors, getting them to safety, and cutting through the chaos. If we can get Sophia Dean, it ends here. If not, the silence between them was enough to fill in the blanks. The situation in Lebanon had already claimed the lives of hundreds, with over 1,400 injured and entire neighborhoods reduced to rubble. Bombed hospitals, families torn apart, innocent people caught in the crossfire of a war that was more about power than peace. The boat reached the shore, and the pair disembarked, moving swiftly through the quiet streets. Or what was left of them. The smell of smoke and burning buildings filled the air, and j could hear distant cries, the sounds of despair echoing through the night. Beirut was unrecognizable, once a city of beauty, culture, and life, now a war-torn wasteland. A single explosion in the distance illuminated the night sky, and Tyrone glanced at j -Cat. We're in deep, J. Stay sharp, j -Cat ordered, his voice hard as steel. We make contact with the local resistance, get the civilians out of the city, and then we move to neutralize Safiadine. 
As they moved through the rubble, J. Cat's thoughts turned to Miss P, the beautiful, brilliant woman he'd fallen for not long ago. She had begged him not to go, knowing this mission could be the one that took him away forever. But J. Cat was a man of duty, driven by justice, even if it meant breaking his own heart. He pushed those thoughts aside as they reached an underground bunker where the local resistance had gathered. Inside, families huddled together, terrified, waiting for their chance to escape the nightmare that had become their reality. J. Cat's presence immediately drew the eyes of the room. You're J. Cat, a woman whispered, awe in her voice. Her face was streaked with dirt, her eyes filled with despair. She held a child in her arms, no older than five. Are you here to save us? J. Cat didn't answer. He didn't need to. His focus was on the mission. How many civilians left in the area? Too many, came the voice of a resistance fighter, a man with a rifle slung across his back. Hundreds. Maybe thousands in the southern part of the city. Hospitals are down. Schools are shelters now, but with the border closed, there's nowhere for them to go. J. Cat's jaw tightened. This was worse than he had thought. We'll do what we can to get them out. But first. Hashem Safiya Ding. Is he still in Beirut? The resistance fighter hesitated before nodding. Rumor is he's holed up in a mansion in the hills. But it's surrounded by armed guards, and after the last airstrike, Hezbollah has doubled security. Getting to him will be a suicide mission. J. Cat's lips curved into a tight, dangerous smile. Let me worry about that. Tyrone stepped forward. I'll start coordinating the evacuation of civilians. If Safiya Dean is the one pulling the strings, we need to cut him off at the source. J. Cat clapped his cousin on the shoulder. Good. Get them out of here. I'll handle Safiya Dean. As Tyrone worked with the resistance, J. Cat slipped out into the night, making his way to the hills where Safiya Dean was reportedly hiding. His mind raced with every step, he knew this mission was about more than just taking down one man. It was about the future of Lebanon, the future of the Middle East, and the lives of the innocent people trapped in this where they didn't ask for. He reached the mansion, shrouded in darkness and guarded by heavily armed Hezbollah soldiers. J-Cat moved like a shadow, slipping past the guards with calculated precision, his skills honed over years of experience. Inside, the mansion was eerily quiet. J-Cat found Safiya Dean sitting at a table, sipping tea as if the world outside wasn't burning. J-Cat, Safiya Dean said, without looking up, I knew you would come. J-Cat's hand hovered over his holstered weapon. This ends tonight. Safiya Dean smiled, setting his teacup down. Does it? Or is this just the beginning? In that moment, J. Cat realized that this conflict was more than just a battle of bullets and bombs. It was a war of ideologies, power, and control. But for him, it was about people, the innocent lives destroyed by men like Safiya Dean, by the endless cycle of violence. Without another word, J. Cat drew his weapon. Safiya Dean didn't even flinch. The silence in the room felt deafening. J. Cat stood, gun drawn, every muscle in his body coiled, waiting for the slightest movement from Safiya Dean. The Hezbollah leader remained seated, his calm demeanor an unsettling contrast to the destruction outside. You think killing me will stop this war? Safiya Dean asked, his voice steady. You think the airstrikes will end when I'm gone? You're a fool if you believe that. J. Cat's eyes remained locked on Safiya Dean, but he didn't pull the trigger. This man had caused untold suffering, yes. But what if Safiya Dean was right? What if this wasn't about one man, but an entire system of violence and retaliation that stretched far beyond this moment? The bloodshed doesn't end with you, J. Cat replied, his voice low, but you're part of the machine. And machines can be dismantled. Safiya Dean smirked, leaning back in his chair. I expected more from someone like you. What now? Do you think killing me will save the lives of the people caught in the crossfire? Your hands are just as dirty as mine, J. Cat. You think you're saving lives, but you're just another weapon in this game. J. Cat's grip on his gun tightened. He had been in this business long enough to know that the lines between right and wrong blurred in war. He had watched as innocent people, children, families, were reduced to collateral damage. He had killed men who had families of their own. But this was different. Safiya Dean wasn't a soldier on the battlefield, he was the architect of chaos, pulling the strings, making sure the bloodshed continued. This isn't a game to me, J. Cat said, taking a step forward. It never has been. Before Safiya Dean could respond, an explosion rocked the mansion, shaking the walls and sending debris falling from the ceiling. 
Jcat instinctively ducked, his gun still trained on Sophia Dean, who remained calm, as if he knew this was coming. Looks like your friends from the air have arrived, Sophia Dean said with a chuckle. It won't matter if you kill me or not. They're going to flatten this city until there's nothing left. Jcat felt the weight of the moment pressing down on him. He had seen the aftermath of such strikes, hospitals reduced to ash, entire neighborhoods erased in an instant. He had come to Lebanon to stop the bloodshed, but now he was staring at the source of it, a man who believed himself untouchable. A second explosion erupted, closer this time, and J. Cat made his decision. With a swift motion, he knocked Sophia Dean unconscious, binding his hands behind his back. Killing him here would change nothing, but capturing him, forcing him to answer for his crimes, could be the key to unraveling Hezbollah's operations. J-Cat dragged Sophia Dean through the mansion as the building began to collapse around them. The heat from the nearby strikes could be felt even inside, and the air was thick with dust and smoke. He had to move fast. Tyrone and the civilians were waiting for him, and the window to escape was closing. He exited the mansion just as another explosion lit up the sky, shaking the earth beneath his feet. His mind raced, he needed an extraction plan, but the situation was worse than he'd imagined. Helicopters from both Israel and Hezbollah buzzed overhead, and the streets were alive with gunfire. Suddenly, J. Cat's earpiece crackled to life. Cat, this is Tyrone. We've got the civilians ready, but the streets are hot. You got Sophia Dean? Yeah, J. Cat responded, hauling Sophia Dean's limp body over his shoulder. But this place is coming down fast. We need air support, or we're not getting out. Already on it, bro. Hang tight. Evac in five. J. Cat moved quickly, ducking through alleyways as debris and gunfire rained down around him. He could hear the screams of civilians trying to flee, the chaos growing louder with every step. Beirut was a war zone, a place where hope had been buried beneath the rubble long ago. As he neared the extraction point, J. Cat saw Tyrone waving from a hidden corner, surrounded by a group of terrified civilians, most of them children. Relief washed over him, Tyrone had managed to evacuate the families they had come to save. Let's move. J. Cat barked as the sound of helicopter blades were closer. Sophia Dean, still unconscious, was dragged to the evac zone, where a military chopper descended. It was a small miracle the pilot had made it this far. J. Cat loaded the civilians in first, then Sophia Dean. As he and Tyrone climbed aboard, the helicopter lifted off, rising above the burning city. From the air, the devastation below was staggering. Entire blocks were ablaze, and black smoke billowed into the sky, obscuring what little light remained. Beirut, once a city of vibrant culture and life, had been reduced to ash in mere hours. As the helicopter soared towards safety, J. Cat looked down at Sophia Dean, now bound and unconscious in the cargo hold. Capturing him was only the beginning. The fight to end this war would be long and brutal. But J. Cat knew he had taken the first step. He wasn't just a weapon. He was a man who fought for something greater than himself. What's next? Tyrone asked, his voice weary as he gazed out at the destruction below. J. Cat's jaw clenched. We take him to the authorities. And then, we start rebuilding what's been lost. Tyrone nodded. This was far from over. J. Cat glanced down at the city one last time, his heart heavy. No. But tonight, we've saved lives. That's all that matters. The helicopter soared through the night sky, the thrum of its blades cutting through the silence that settled over J-Cat like a heavy shroud. The weight of what had just happened pressed on his chest as he looked down at the smoldering ruins of Beirut. In the quiet hum of the chopper, the memories of the day's bloodshed began to claw at his mind. Tyrone sat beside him, staring out at the darkened horizon, his expression grim but resolute. He had seen too much to allow hope to blind him to reality. War never truly ended. It shifted, evolved, bled into every corner of life, leaving behind scars too deep to heal. You're thinking too much, Tyrone said quietly, breaking the silence between them. I know that look. J. Cat turned to him, his eyes shadowed with the weight of guilt and determination. This was far from over, Ty. We got Sophia Dean, but he's just a piece. We may have stopped him, but there's a thousand more like him waiting to take his place. And the longer this goes on, the more lives get caught in the crossfire. Tyrone nodded, his jaw tight. I know. But we've got to start somewhere. You said it yourself, tonight, we saved lives. We gave those people a chance they wouldn't have had without us. J. Cat's gaze drifted back to the city below, now shrinking into the distance. And what about the ones we couldn't save? 
The ones buried under that rubble? The ones still out there, trapped in a war that they didn't choose? Tyrone didn't answer. There was no good answer to that question. Instead, he sat back, the silence between them speaking louder than words. The truth was, no matter how many lives they saved, the cost of war was always too high. As the helicopter flew on, the weight of their mission settled into J-Cat's bones. He wasn't just fighting one man, one organization, he was fighting an entire system of hate, fear, and violence. And for every battle won, a dozen more waited on the horizon. Suddenly, the pilot's voice crackled through the headset. We're coming up on the extraction point. Evac team is ready for Safiya Dean. J-Cat shifted, glancing back at the Hezbollah leader, who was still unconscious, bound and bruised in the corner of the chopper. Safiya Dean was a powerful man, but now, stripped of his followers and influence, he looked small, insignificant. Yet, J-Cat knew better than anyone how dangerous a man like Safiya Dean could be, even when he appeared defeated. His capture was just the beginning. The helicopter began its descent, landing on a makeshift airstrip hidden in the mountains. As soon as the chopper touched down, a group of armed soldiers and intelligence agents moved in, taking Safiya Dean into custody. J-Cat and Tyrone stepped off the helicopter, their boots crunching against the gravel of the landing zone. A tall, stern-looking woman in military fatigues approached them, her eyes scanning them both with a sharp, calculating gaze. Nice work out there, she said, her voice clipped and professional. You just handed us one of Hezbollah's top operatives. But don't think this ends here. Safiya Dean's men will be looking for revenge, and we've already picked up chatter about retaliatory strikes. J-Cat nodded. We figured as much. They won't go quietly. No, the woman agreed, her expression darkening. They won't. But Safiya Dean's capture has sent shockwaves through the region. You've shaken their foundation. It's going to take time for them to regroup. We need to hit them while they're vulnerable. Tyrone stepped forward. What's the plan? The woman glanced between them, her jaw set. We need intel. Safiya Dean knows the inner workings of Hezbollah better than anyone. We'll interrogate him, see what we can extract. In the meantime, we've identified several key targets, arms depots, safe houses, communication hubs. We need you to lead a strike team to take them out. J-Cat exchanged a glance with Tyrone. The mission was far from over. In fact, it was just beginning. We're in, J-Cat said, his voice steady. When do we move? The woman's eyes gleamed with approval. Tomorrow night. Get some rest you're going to need it. The following day passed in a blur of briefings and preparations. J-Cat and Tyrone studied maps, reviewed intel, and worked with the strike team to plan their next move. The targets were spread across several locations deep in the heart of Lebanon, hidden in remote areas that would be difficult to reach without drawing attention. Night fell quickly, and by the time the team was ready to move, the moon hung low in the sky, casting an eerie glow over the mountains. The mission was a high-stakes gamble. If they succeeded, Hezbollah's operations would be crippled. But if they failed, the consequences would be catastrophic. J-Cat led the team through the dense forest, their movements swift and silent. His mind was razor-focused, every sense heightened as they approached the first target, a heavily guarded arms depot buried deep in the hills. Through his night vision goggles, J-Cat could see the guards patrolling the perimeter, their rifles slung across their shoulders. He signaled to Tyrone who moved into position, preparing to take out the sentries with silenced shots. One by one, the guards dropped, their bodies crumpling soundlessly to the ground. The team moved in, planting explosives along the depot's walls. J-Cat's heart raced as he set the timer, his fingers steady despite the tension coursing through him. Charges set, Tyrone whispered, his voice barely audible over the sound of the wind rustling through the trees. Let's move, J-Cat ordered. The team withdrew slipping back into the shadows as the countdown ticked closer to zero. Moments later, a deafening explosion tore through the night, lighting up the sky as the arms depot went up in flames. The ground shook beneath their feet, and for a brief moment, J-Cat allowed himself to feel a flicker of satisfaction. But there was no time to celebrate. The second target awaited. Hours later, as dawn began to break over the horizon, J-Cat and his team stood on the outskirts of a remote communication hub. The mission had been brutal, with several close calls, but they had managed to take out two of Hezbollah's key strongholds. Now, all that remained was the hub, Hezbollah's lifeline to the outside world. As J-Cat moved into position, his body aching from the strain of the night's operations, a feeling of unease settled over him. 
Something wasn't right. The hub was too quiet. No guards, no activity. It was as if the place had been abandoned. Tyrone, J. Cat whispered into his comms. Do you see anything? Tyrone's voice crackled in response. Nothing. It's dead out here. J. Cat's instinct screamed at him to pull back, but it was too late. A sudden explosion ripped through the air, sending him flying backward. His vision blurred as he hit the ground hard, the force of the blast knocking the wind out of him. He struggled to his feet, his ears ringing, and saw the ambush unfold before him. Hezbollah fighters poured out of the surrounding forest, their guns blazing. His team was pinned down, outnumbered and outgunned. Tyrone. J. Cat shouted, his voice raw with desperation. Tyrone was already in the thick of it, returning fire as he and the rest of the team fought to hold their ground. But the enemy was closing in fast. J. Cat's mind raced. They had been set up. Hezbollah had known they were coming, and now they were trapped. The war was far from over, and tonight, they were paying the price. With a surge of adrenaline, J. Cat grabbed his rifle, his determination hardening into steel. They might be outnumbered, but he wasn't about to let Hezbollah win. Not here. Not tonight. The world around J-Cat was a cacophony of gunfire, smoke, and chaos. Bullets whipped past his head, and the scent of burning debris filled the air as explosions erupted in the distance. Hezbollah's ambush was calculated and precise, pinning his team down with relentless force. J-Cat ducked behind the smoldering remains of a vehicle, his heart pounding in his chest. He had faced impossible odds before, but this felt different, a deadly trap, carefully set to take them all down in one swift blow. Tyrone, we need to move. J. Cat's voice cut through the noise, but his partner was already on the same page. Tyrone was crouched low behind a stone wall, returning fire in controlled bursts. Got you covered but these guys aren't playing around. J. Cat cursed under his breath, scanning the landscape. The ambush had been too perfect. There had to be an informant, someone feeding Hezbollah intel on their movements. But that question would have to wait. Right now, survival was the only priority. J. Cat pulled the pin from a grenade, took a deep breath, and hurled it toward the advancing fighters. The explosion sent dust and shrapnel into the air, forcing their attackers to momentarily scatter. Now! J. Cat shouted, motioning to his team. They sprang into action, sprinting from cover, weaving through the debris-strewn battlefield toward a more defensible position atop a nearby ridge. J. Cat kept his rifle trained on the enemy, providing cover as Tyrone led the others to safety. His mind worked rapidly, formulating a plan. They needed their support, and fast. Command, this is J. Cat. He barked into his comms as he ducked behind a crumbling concrete pillar. We've been ambushed at the comms hub. Need immediate airstrike coordinates on our location. Do you copy? Static filled his earpiece, and for a heart-stopping moment, J. Cat thought the line had gone dead. Then a voice crackled through, faint but clear. Copy that, J. Cat. Airstrike inbound. Hold your position for two minutes. Two minutes, J. Cat muttered to himself. Might as well be a lifetime. He turned to find Tyrone, who had just reached the ridge with the rest of the team. His eyes met J. Cat's, and a wordless understanding passed between them. This wasn't just about surviving, it was about holding the line long enough for the airstrike to level the playing field. J. Cat dropped to one knee, his rifle steady in his hands. Hezbollah fighters were closing in again, their gunfire relentless. But J. Cat's aim was deadly accurate. He fired in quick succession, taking down three militants in a heartbeat. Behind him, Tyrone laid down suppressive fire, keeping the rest of the team covered. Seconds ticked by like hours. The enemy was unrelenting, pouring more men into the fight as if they knew reinforcements were on their way. J. Cat could feel the weight of the war pressing down on him, the familiar burn of fatigue setting in. But he pushed it aside, focusing on each shot, each movement. There was no room for error now. How much longer? Tyrone called out, his voice strained as he ducked another volley of bullets. Thirty seconds. J. Cat yelled back. But he wasn't sure they had thirty seconds. Suddenly, an RPG streaked toward them, its rocket tail lighting up the night sky. Incoming. J. Cat shouted, diving to the ground just as the explosion hit. The force of the blast rocked the hillside, sending debris flying. He felt the impact rattle through his bones as the shockwave rolled over him. When the dust cleared, J. Cat struggled to his feet, his vision blurred. Tyrone. He called out, panic rising in his chest. I'm good. 
Tyrone's voice answered from a few yards away, though he was coughing and covered in dirt. We've got a hold on just a little longer. Before J-Cat could respond, the low hum of approaching jets filled the air. He looked up and saw them, fighter planes roaring overhead, their payloads primed for release. The cavalry had arrived. Take cover. J-Cat ordered as the first bombs fell, their deafening blasts shaking the earth. Fire and smoke consumed the battlefield as the airstrike tore through Hezbollah's ranks. The landscape was transformed in an instant, the enemy lines disintegrating under the sheer force of the attack. J-Cat and his team huddled behind whatever cover they could find, the heat from the explosion searing their skin. When the bombing finally subsided, an eerie silence settled over the battlefield. The once fierce and chaotic firefight had been reduced to smoldering ruins and scattered bodies. J-Cat pulled himself up, surveying the devastation. The comms hub had been obliterated, and with it, Hezbollah's ability to coordinate their forces. But there was no time to celebrate. J-Cat knew better than anyone that victory in war was always fleeting. Tyrone limped over, his face smeared with dirt and sweat. Hell of a way to end a night, huh? He said, offering J-Cat a grim smile. J-Cat nodded, his expression unreadable. Yeah, but this isn't the end. Hezbollah will regroup, and they'll come back stronger. We bought ourselves some time, but that's all. Tyrone looked out over the ruined landscape, his brow furrowed. So what now? J-Cat took a deep breath, feeling the weight of their next steps pressing down on him. Now we regroup, too. We've got to figure out who tipped them off about the comms hub. There's a rat in the system, and we need to flush them out. Tyrone nodded. And after that? J-Cat's gaze hardened. We take the fight to them. We cripple their networks, dismantle their leadership, and make sure they never rise again. Tyrone grinned. That's what I'd like to hear. The team began to regroup, tending to the wounded and gathering their gear. The helicopters were already on their way to extract them, but J. Cat's mind was racing ahead to the next battle. The war against Hezbollah was far from over, and if tonight had proven anything, it was that the enemy was more resourceful than ever. As they waited for the choppers, Jacat found a moment to himself, standing at the edge of the ridge and looking down at the destruction below. This was the reality of war, the lives lost, the cities ruined, the unending cycle of violence. But he wasn't fighting just for vengeance or victory. He was fighting for something deeper, for the innocent lives caught in the crossfire, for a world where justice could prevail over chaos. The sound of approaching helicopters cut through the night, and Jacat straightened. The battle was over, but the war raged on. And as long as there was breath in his body, he would fight for those who couldn't fight for themselves. The helicopter touched down, and J-Cat climbed aboard, his heart heavy but resolute. Tyrone sat beside him, his face set with determination. As they lifted off, leaving behind the wreckage of the night's fight, Tyrone looked at J-Cat. This was far from over. J-Cat glanced down at the city one last time, the flicker of flame still visible in the distance. No. But tonight, we saved lives. That's all that matters. The helicopter hummed through the night, cutting across the darkened skies. Below, the city lay in ruins, its streets torn apart by violence, homes shattered, and families displaced. J-Cat gazed out of the open door, his eyes fixed on the destruction beneath him, but his thoughts were elsewhere. There was no time to celebrate small victories. His mind was already racing ahead to the next mission, the next battle, the next move in a war that seemed unending. Beside him, Tyrone sat silent, the weight of the night's battle etched into his face. His hands were still gripping his rifle, though the fighting was over. The air was thick with unspoken words, a shared understanding between two men who had seen too much of war's brutality. They were survivors, fighters, but the cost of that survival was written in their tired eyes. The helicopter's engine droned on as they flew farther from the battlefield, and finally, Tyrone broke the silence. You ever wonder if we're making any real difference out here, J-Cat? I mean, we win a battle, save a few lives, but then what? The next day, we're right back in the thick of it. The war just keeps going. J-Cat didn't answer immediately. He knew where Tyrone was coming from, the fatigue, the doubt, the sense of fighting an endless war. It was something every soldier, every operative, faced eventually. The weight of the lives they couldn't save often felt heavier than the ones they did. But J-Cat had long since made peace with the reality of war. It's not about ending the war, J-Cat finally said, his voice low. It's about the people we save in the middle of it. One life, one battle at a time. That's how we make a difference.
If we stop, if we walk away, then the innocent get swallowed up by the violence. So we fight. Because if we don't, who will? Tyrone stared at him, the words sinking in. He nodded slowly, understanding but still weighed down by the grim reality of their lives. The helicopter banked, and the lights of a nearby military base came into view. Their extraction point. The rest of their team was already being unloaded, medics rushing to attend to the injured. As the helicopter touched down, J-Cat and Tyrone disembarked, stepping into the harsh glow of the base floodlights. A commanding officer approached them, his face stern. Good work out there tonight, J-Cat. You saved a lot of lives. J-Cat nodded, but there was no sense of victory in his expression. We lost a few too, he said quietly. And Hezbollah isn't done. They'll regroup. We know, the officer replied. But we've got intel coming in. A possible location on their new hideout. We'll brief you after you get cleaned up. J-Cat gave a nod, but his heart felt heavy. It was always the same, another hideout, another mission, another fight. The cycle of violence that seemed to have no end. But he had made his choice long ago. This was the life he had committed to, and as long as there were people in danger, as long as there were those who needed protection, he would keep going. He and Tyrone walked toward the barracks in silence, the sounds of the bustling base around them fading into the background. The weight of their weapons and gear felt heavier than usual, like the physical embodiment of the burden they carried. You think this war will ever end? Tyrone asked again, but this time there was no bitterness, just a quiet resignation. J-Cat thought for a moment before answering. Maybe not in our lifetimes. But someday, someone will find a way. Until then, we keep fighting. We keep protecting the ones who can't protect themselves. Tyrone smiled faintly, tired but grateful for J-Cat's unwavering resolve. Guess that's why you're the best, man. You never give up. J-Cat didn't respond, but a small part of him wished he could give up, wished he could walk away from the endless conflict and the bloodshed. But he knew he never would. This was his life, his calling, and as long as there was injustice in the world, J-Cat would be there, standing in the way of those who sought to harm the innocent. As they reached the barracks, the first rays of dawn began to break over the horizon, casting a soft glow over the war-torn landscape. For a brief moment, the world seemed quiet, almost peaceful. J-Cat looked out toward the horizon, feeling the weight of the night's battle finally begin to lift. The war wasn't over. It might never be. But for tonight, at least, they had saved lives. And that, for J-Cat, was enough. He turned to Tyrone with a faint smile. Let's get some rest. Tomorrow's a new day. Tyrone grinned, exhaustion in his eyes. Yeah, tomorrow's another fight. J-Cat nodded, and together, they walked into the barracks, leaving the darkness of the night behind. Whatever tomorrow held, they would face it together, side by side. And as long as they did, there was still hope. And that's a wrap on another thrilling episode of J-Cat Adventures. I hope you've been on the edge of your seat, caught up in the mystery, excitement, and danger that always follows J-Cat wherever he goes. From heart-pounding action to deep emotional connections, J-Cat's world never fails to surprise. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe, or, click the follow button, so you never miss out on the next big adventure. Whether you're into romance, suspense, or mind-bending mysteries, there's always something more coming. And don't be shy, reach out. You can audio call or audio text chat with me directly. I'd love to know what you want to see next in J-Cat's world or hear your thoughts on today's episode. Want to dive deeper? Explore more of J-Cat's thrilling escapades by grabbing an ebook at www.jcatadventures.com or head over to Amazon for paperbacks and hard copies. Trust me, you'll want to have J-Cat's latest adventure right in your hands. And remember, the podcast continues across your favorite platforms, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and Amazon Music. Wherever you go, J-Cat is right there, ready to bring you into his world of suspense, romance, and non-stop action. But it doesn't end here, this journey is just the beginning. Stay tuned for the next episode, where J-Cat takes on new challenges, faces dangerous foes, and maybe even finds love in unexpected places. Until next time, keep that spirit of adventure burning bright. The world is filled with endless possibilities, and J-Cat is proof that no mystery is too big to solve. Remember, adventure is thrilling, but the heart's deepest desires are the greatest mysteries of all. Keep chasing passion, stay fearless, and never let love slip through your fingers.
This is Jay Bahari, signing off. Stay curious, stay bold, and always keep exploring, because the next chapter of J-Cat Adventures is just around the corner. Sold in a digital age To the Harry's love Breaking out the way Soul of mission Breaking down the wall Sixty years deeper